Good morning. This is a talk about regenerative agriculture. So that dancing is exactly what we want to see in the underground wealth of community, who we include in our tummies, in our watersheds, as we work forward together. Yes? yes. OK. Um, I came in my first slide with the question, which was, what does the land want? And I came alongside, in my interspecies uh, presentation here, alongside the freshwater and the saltwater algae, who in the deep history of time were the first to cross the frontier from the sea onto the land, whose innovations and in whose distributed volition yielded incredible symbiosis ultimately with mushrooms, but invented photosynthesis, creating something we know as the commons we share, which is the air, the atmosphere. So just to remember, here we are, in deep history and time, in this watershed, on this flat plain, with that watershed flowing through our tummies, in this work, thanks to the algae. Um, I come to you as an organizer, as an agroecologist, as a young farmer, and my work has been in agitating, animating, connecting, celebrating, vocalizing, instigating in the young farmer space in the USA for all those people who want to bring their brains and their bodies and their businesses and their ambition out onto the landscape, um, which is so needed. And all of that is through different kinds of institutional forms, social forms, relational forms, commitment to each other, commitment to the work, stamina is critical in this work. Um, and I come in association, these are my people that I am coming with, um, and I'm happy to go into more detail, and we have later on a session with the young farmers of New Zealand and with the primary industries men. <laughs> uh, in cahoots for the land and the future. Uh, these are some of the associations and forms that I have participated in in a decade of organizing in this space, the young farmer space, um, which is not outer space, which is not the lithosphere, which is not the atmosphere, it is the rhizosphere. It is the site of action where the dribbles of sugar made by the sun are transmitting their generosity to all that is below a.k.a. the wealth underground, <laughs> which we participate in on a daily basis, bended humbly, but in reverence of the renewal we can bring forth in our work, in our commitment. So what is that work? That is the work of repairing and restoring and remembering that we are part of a great cycle of life, a complexity of intergenerational interspecies dynamism, forward motion, distributed volition, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, and we're members, not designers of those cycles. Humbly so. Humbly so those who discovered agriculture, those who discovered and were in deep relationship with all the tastes and flavors of what that plant wanted to do, what that fruit where it was going, what my taste said. Oh, what are you doing? What am I doing? Here we are. Ch -ch -ch. Over time, that dynamism brings us the diversity of fruits and smoothies that we have today. <laughs> and it pulls three ways. Me and what I want, she and what she wants, climate and where she's going. And that vector, that triathlon, has been going for quite a while. And I tell you, that climate's getting more opinionated. <laughs> Here is another Polynesian island in Hawaii, the watershed basin, the community of life, the relational boundary is called a ahapuaha. And all the people and all the fishing and all the villaging and all the taro and all these <laughs> tropical agriculture that moves through the ecosystem with its wet feet so it doesn't get fungus, that was managed by the other Polynesians in the outskirt land. But you might want to come and visit sometime because these tropical, warm, hot climates are so exciting for watching restoration and watching the revivification and watching the rediversification that is possible. And in a pasture, it happens too, and you get juicy green grass. And I'm going to talk about the practices and principles of regenerative agriculture as part of my talk. But if you get a chance to watch 
regenerative systems in a, in a tropical ecosystem, I really recommend it because it's so fast and it's so glorious and it's so explosive and bombastic. Anyway, I fell in love with Hawaiian, so I'm biased. <laughs> so um, in our great place of history and time, in our landscape, we look out at what is aspirationally clean and green and what we have been habituated to as the pastoral landscape, as our habitat in agriculture. We don't necessarily always see the fallout and the upstream and the downstream of those broken cycles of carbon and nitrogen and water. So just to remind ourselves that the wealth underground, which has provided the wealth of timber, of fish, the wealth of iron and steel, the wealth of all industries, the wealth of all trade, the wealth of all technologies and civilizations, the wealth of all power and empire, that wealth was come from the dismantling of Earth. So when we're in the project of renewal and when we're in the project of restoration and when we're in the project of survival, let's remember there is an investment cycle here and there is a return of what has been extracted and damaged and degraded. So that's where we stand in history as the daughters of extraction and the great granddaughters of extraction and with this project of restoration. So what are some of the principles? Uh, I got my algae. What are some of the practices and principles of regenerative agriculture? Bringing back into balance the biological underpinnings of the productive system which supports our nutrition. Well, it has to do with the health of the creatures and the co co cohoots, they're in cohoots and in cohesion and in consonance with one another, generating biologically, not chemically, not artificially, but biologically through their work together, through the sugars of the sun, cycling effectively. So we're rotating our crops, we're adding intensive rotations of shitting animals, we're bringing greater diversity with the bees and the bugs and the pollinators and the habitat for the sly little ones on the land. We're bringing organic compost back onto the fields. We are rotating through to avoid pestilence and concentrations of monoculture, which attract pestilence. We are creating a balanced system that mimics nature, where nature is our measure, where the ecological systems that are of their own volition, self-willed, wilderness, what do you know, they're healthy as heck most of the time, left to their own. So how do we learn from those principles of ecological design? And this is being undertaken by many people around the world, great glory, what work? Restoring, repairing, reconstituting, sensing, in relationship, noticing, implementing. Conservation plowing on the left, that was implemented after the Dust Bowl in the United States across millions of acres. What do you know if we plow on a contour? The land doesn't slup down the slope. Something that happens around here, I notice. Agroforestry system, intensifying the tree cover, what they call closed canopy, systems that produce pork, that produce beef, that produce applesauce, that produce cider, that produce hazelnut butter with chocolate in it. Here to, <laughs> from a different climate. So 40% of our terrestrial land is agriculture. So the project of bringing the carbon back into the land, back into the soil, back into the cycle of life from this, remember, atmosphere where it's over-concentrated with carbon, the practice of that is through algae in the ocean and through agriculture on the land. That's what's at stake. That's where we do it. That's where the work is to be done and more of you are needed to do it. I think one of the new emergent thoughts that I have had as a result of this community of decentralized, self-directed, joyous, rapturous um, work is that the project of rewilding and refurbishing and restoring and reconstituting brings forward new social forms. So we have legacy of empire, so we have private property, so we have your grudge, so we have your history. Well, when the river floods, when the hurricane blows, when the tornado comes, that old chain link fence means nothing much. She's gonna flow, time will flow, climate will flow. The vector, the opinionated nature 
on whom we are all resting. She's got changes and it is up to us to reconstitute, reshuffle, reorganize, react, respond. Our responsibility is in fact a key determinant of our survival. And our responsibility relies on this limited amount of agricultural lands. So in these new frontiers of land ownership, land governance, land stewardship, land access, who's on the land? Who can be on the land? How are those people on the land supported by the rest of us who eat? All the rebuilding of businesses, all the artisan foods, all the mom and pop shops, all the startups that are co-located in a small town with a butcher and a baker and a candlestick maker, <laughs> well, and a branding company. <laughs> what about a dynamic, awesome countryside where affordable housing means small, medium, and large-scale businesses, not only global export, Sure, you're good at it. Well, let's do also other stuff. There's plenty of room for more people to get out on this landscape, and the landscape is calling for those people. So here's some people. That's my friend Asa, with actually an uh, old banner from an from a army recruitment. But he uses it for his piglets <laughs> to shelter them in their cold mornings. Mapping out what is to be done, sharing opportunities with those who are arriving, figuring out what comes next, what does the land want, where is this local farm self-determined economy going here around me with people I know that I'm committed to in place. That's a process of discovery and sharing, and it's a process of deep, deep relation. Deep relation. Not always the same as here and there entrepreneur culture, not always the same as techie culture, but I would argue a critical part of all of our culture as land-based organisms, <laughs> and a critical part of being equals together in respect to hear and share from those who are in intimate daily relationship with ecosystem. How are we transmitting respect, even if farmers are sometimes seen to be humble ones, that that humility is a premonition and that humility is a long lineage of human practice. And maybe it's a little bit of a pathway through agrarianism back towards even more comprehensive commitment to the watershed place and community. So here's our young farmers. Here's some more young farmers. You can meet all the young farmers. They sell food. They are very accessible. <laughs> You can, you can go and volunteer on in a farm very easily um, one day a week and have really good food. Or you could do something else. So just briefly, the project that after many years of work I have been undertaking of late, um, and thanks to the support of many in this community, this has become a reality, is a project of commoning, an experiment in treating our land, our landscape, as a commons, a food commons. What does that mean legally? What does that mean culturally? What does that mean practically? Well, what it means is that of the 1% of the land in the US, which is organic, much of it has no plan for succession. So bringing more land into organic, making that land accessible to those who cannot afford the high capital costs, and keeping our basin, our watershed of food intact, means we can look at cooperative ownership deconstructing this private property paradigm that we're in. You know Creative Commons? Creative Commons of the land. Creative Commons of the food. So right now we have built the legal infrastructure, we've created the governance structure, we've studied the Eleanor Orstrom work of many years to create the Agrarian Trust, and there's six properties that are coming in this year. One was a pure gift, one was a bargain sale, one was a green finance, one was a buy it at real full price. And our work is modeled on work that has happened in other places, in France and in Belgium and Germany. The average investment in France was 2,000 euros, and there's now 117 farms that are cooperatively owned, farmed on 99-year leases by young farmers and old farmers and medium-aged farmers who are committed to feeding their community, no export, no violation of organic practices. It's a covenant. You see what I mean? It's guardianship. It's not dominion. 
So anyway, with the rivers and the bears and the mountains, whenever they talk about the mountain and the river, I always think about the, the salmon because that's who comes up and that's who connects so powerfully the nutrient of ocean onto the land, just like the algae comes, the nutrient of ocean onto the land. Wait a minute, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> metrics, big data, left brain, rational. <laughs> There's different indicators that are available to us also. And in the wild practice world, in the rewilding world, they, they talk a lot about bird counts. They say, well, we can see how we're doing. We can count the birds. So I, I would argue that that's one of the practices to bring into all of our rational, metric-based world, is to remember the birds will also sing us the story. We need to know if we're doing the right work. Um, finally, this is an invitation. This is a 400-page almanac, a literary journal of young farmers, the fourth edition. We would love more voices from you English-speaking subcontinents down here. Um, and the next submission period has already begun because farmers really only write in winter, which it is for you now, or something approaching fall. <laughs> Number two, we have a webinar with the Lyft Economy. If you're interested to learn more about our model for commons ownership, if you're an investor who wants to get involved, we're going to have a very rational, left mind dominated conversation. <laughs> and then another thing to know is that since being here, I have been in locked in continuous collaborative frenzy with other regenerative ag activists, organizers, farmers, to do more mapping, community mapping, within the regenerative ag space in New Zealand so that we can welcome more new entrants, so that we can welcome those who are already trapped in a nitrogen cycle, um, problematic nitrogen cycle that's expensive and in can be insolvent, even if the nitrogen is soluble. So how are we welcoming more people into regenerative agriculture? If you want to be part of that community mapping project, dialogue, and distributed process of emancipatory yes, we have a field trip on Thursday. And we have a listserv, and I have a clipboard. And my time is up. <laughs>